In a world where Africans have lost their roots, it has become of vital importance to document our ways. In an effort to reverse the brainwashing of the past, where we were made to believe our ways are demonic, we are pressed to create dignified and respectful platforms to unpack our spiritual ways. Hi, this is Ntiki Maswai, the producer of Moya. Thank you so much for all your love and support. The bank details are now on screen. Please do your bit so that we can build this university so we can give the African child the education that they're not getting at the Mlungu schools. Thank you so much, guys. Umoya u light, umoya u fight. Kamalam gunon zikele loa kwa mazwai. And it's a great pleasure and privilege to be here once again. Thank you guys for all your support. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, guys. Don't be like that, please, because we see that more than 80% of you are not subscribed. So um, please stop hiding in the closet. We know you're part of us. <laughs> Thank you so, so, so much for all the support. We always see you. Obviously, Moya is here to bring you the best in African education. We are unearthing the history and making sure to give the African child the information that they're not going to get at this Mlungu school. Today, I've got Bab Masangu and um, such an important topic because we, we deal with gifted children, you know? We don't just come out of nowhere and then they're like, hey, you know? So thank you, Bab Masangu, for taking the time to come and share your privileged information with us. Thank you so much. Um, Togozi say it's really an awesome pleasure to be with you on this podcast and to share the wisdom that God has entrusted me with. We are talking about indigo children and they're very close to my heart. Thank you. So let's start, I mean, right at the beginning, like, oh wait, let's start with you, with your 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 journey of healing and where you come from before we get to. All right. Um my journey has always been one that's um, that's talked about over the social media, not personally mine, because I emanate from the, the Amakosi clan, you know, I'm from the royal bloodline. Mm. So that actually makes me a healer who doesn't go through traditional um, initiation. Mm. So there has always been people who discredit people like us. Mm. But I can tell you today that, you know, from the royal clan, you find healers who are born with a gift yeah. that is highly evolved from inception. So as a result, we are not going through initiation. So I didn't go through formal initiation. So in essence, mm. so I'm a royal healer. And you don't need to for Tines Ngayas. Well, that's a good question. That's always going through the socials. And, you know, there's a lot of um, insulting that goes on because people don't know. So when we talk about Abangoma, we talk about people who went through a formal initiation, which is in the institution of Bungoma. So these are people about Puza, Bal Palaz, Libalel. So it's the it's the, the 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 common type of you know healing um, initiation. So there's things that go into that, and we've got another type of those who were born intuitively inclined. Mm -hmm. We talk about people who who whose spiritual gifts just need refining, and in essence, it just needs in That's all it needs. It doesn't need initiation, because you know these are elite type of healers who have evolved over the centuries and they've come to a point where they have taken a mastery in terms of healing that's why they can't be put through a process which has a detailed process you initiate to moon so most of them they call them self initiates but now do they go through but this is a very different type course so from umgoma is someone who is basically going through ubungoma and then Oamakosi is going through process Yamakos. So we are called self initiates. And I say too well, apparently, but I'm here to educate and make people understand that, you know, we don't all go through the same journey of Bungoma, but there's another journey for self initiates Ayamakos. So then when you were still young, since we are going to speak about indigo children, mm -hmm. what were the little things that were annoying your parents or your family? You know, because well, luckily with me, I've always known that I was gifted, but you know, my gift was, I would call it fancy, you know, in such a way that it was aligned more to the church um, practice. So my father was a pastor, my mother was a pastor. 
So I was I was born in the church, and at the age of five, I used to pray for people that would get healing. You know, I used to be a leader at Sunday school at five years old, and I would preach. You know, this is something that I've always had. But a problem came among discover witting in Amakel because from royalty, you don't possess only one spiritual practice. You also have, you know, and coupled with Amakela because you don't have to go through formal initiation of Bongom. So when I discovered Amakela, that's where I had a problem. I started making bad decisions, trying to hide behind the church. And I ran away. Mm. That's when I got now a series of unfortunate events that felt like punishment because I was misaligned at that time. So that's when I started, you know, going back in line and understand because unfortunately, I was the very first self-initiate I had known. Mm -hmm. I initiated myself through guidance at Lozi, and there was a physical mentor who was taking me through the process and assisted with what did I see in my dreams because Lozi learning to assist. So I was the only first initiate. I've only known about self-initiates when I was done with my self-initiation process. <laughs> For people who don't know the different terms, because you know, Apekaya, we're still learning as Zindo. So yes. Indo Nikela. Well, Ikeza, um, you know, when you look at healers, we've got different types of healers. Mm -hmm. These are alchemists. These are African medicine men. Ama, it's, it's people who have been behind, you know, African medicine. Because we sleep and dream about certain herbs, how to mix them. And, you know, these concoctions, these um, decoctions, you know, we are people who, who get divine messages that show us how to provide healing. Mm. Because as Ikeza, if you come with a sickness, you know, I also get the privilege to be, to, to get information, a push in with Lumutum one and two and three and four. So we also have a very strong intuition that connects to the plants and connects to the earthly elementals. Mm. So we are able to then come up with powerful concoctions. It's crazy how one of my recent clients went to um, I'm a gynecologist. She couldn't get her HPV healed, but you know, after years, she said, I want to try African medicine. I administered once and she was calling me. She was calling my assistant. She said, I want to speak to Umkul. So when she got a hold of me, she said, Mkulu, I'm healed. Thank you so much. I went through scans. I was cleared. So through African medicine, because, you know, mm. through the connection with earthly elementals. Mm. And I'm talking about plants. I'm talking about water and other elementals as well. Okay. So we're still trying to, because I, I, I think we want to get, so you're, you're a preacher at five years old. And then yes. what happens? And... Interesting story. <laughs> so, um, mm. so, but when I was born, my mother and my father were in the church. So it was just, you know, a, a linear, you know, spirituality path. So, so Sasen Konzweni, yes, I was Christian, you know, Sasen Konzweni. So we did everything the church required for us to do. And so I think when I was in high school, so I felt that my spirit wanted something stronger because when I moved and went back home to my family house in Mamelodi, you know, in Pretoria, so, mm. you know, the Roman Catholic Christian church is a mainstream, it's, it's a mainline church. Mm. You know, in Konzo, mm. there's always things you read, you know, it's very mundane. Yes. I'm so sorry, I don't want to offend people. But it's got those processes which are predefined. It mm. doesn't follow spirit, you know, it doesn't allow lento mm. ye moi. So, and then I got bored. I felt like my spirit is seeking something higher. You know, there was a calling for me to actually respond to. So when I got bored, I was introduced to Abba Zalwa and I felt like now these guys are going deep in spirit. I love the depth, you know, speaking in tongues, you know, you know, going deeper into the spiritual uh, framework of a person and actually connecting to the divine. So I went on with that. I think I've exceeded a level where I was just a follower because I was seeking more and more and more until I hit the ceiling. When I hit the ceiling, I got bored, you know, because my spirit had actually closed. I was not getting answers. Nothing was happening. So now I defaulted from church. So mm -hmm. when I defaulted, I was looking for answers. The questions were, why do we exist? How old are you now? Now I'm 34. No, no, at that time. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> at that time, um, I guess I was, how old was I? I guess I was about 24. Okay. Yes. Mm. Somewhere 24, yeah. 23. So now I got bored. I was actually looking for um, something that was higher. You know, I knew that my soul was calling for something more divine and mm. higher. So then I started researching. So I went through the first stage of, 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 of awakening, which is called the dark night of the soul. 
my soul was so mm. dark i couldn't go on with religion because religion had too many restrictions limitations because i mean honestly speaking as an african child i can safely say that religions have a limitation but spirituality allows you know it's open so i needed to explore what religion was limiting me to the concept of the trinity and i couldn't go beyond the biblical trinity so then i started researching i went through metaphysics astrology astro theology i went through quantum physics quantum mechanics i went through um chinese literature you know i was inspired by lao tzu i went through a whole lot of confucianism so i went through a whole lot of literature so i spent two full years um at least at that time at be beng shadil so i i almost said being a jolly being a pussy <laughs> so even in my marriage i was so reserved i i, I was so skinny because i was taking this thing so seriously that mm. i stopped eating meat stopped eating processed foods you know because mm. i was my soul was going through the dark night mm. so and then i absorbed so much information i started learning about meditation started learning about different states of mind i started learning about you know how reality connects to science and physics i started learning so much about biology you know the systems of a human so i think that's what gives so much credibility to my work because i have studied things from inception from the core so as i was going through that phase and now i was still in church then i felt like you know church is limiting me i can't but my pastor was still alive my pastor was like my father so i was afraid to come out because i knew i spoke to him and he said you know what my son we spend so much time watching watching national geographic right i said yes and he says can you remember what is the strategy used by lions when they're trying to to single out or when they're trying to devour you know any any animal within a big head then i said yes the lions will actually bring a distraction animals will start running and you know they will look for the weaklings the weakest link isolate and they attack So he says you are stepping out of the environment of the church. You say you are looking for God but outside of the church the devil is using your intelligence. He's luring you into these so-called interesting, you know, um spiritual arts mm. and spiritual literature but he's taking you away. So I was disappointed and I held back but when he passed on then I came. <laughs> and I thought to myself, you know, my pastor is not going to be disappointed. He's in heaven. He will see what I'm doing. So um after then I accepted Itonga but you know the funny thing is I refused to accept the calling a hamba nekel because it looked as though zoba inyang I even asked my ancestors do you really see what I am didn't you somehow make a mistake because at that time I couldn't speak language for at least 2 minutes two sentences I was full on English and my life was just in Jay conventional it had nothing to do with culture tradition at that moment i hated tradition i felt like it was too busy overly decorated highly colorful and unattractive you can imagine such a a messed up mindset as an Self african child i hated my africanism because you know religion provided a beautiful approach where we were makikian bobos we were called men of god you know because i was an apostolic teacher i come from a church which did not did not appreciate or even acknowledge ancestors we were extremely biblical we didn't believe in anything that was outside of the biblical confines so you can imagine from that environment actually coming a losing so it was easy for me to believe in quantum physics because they're able to quantify and sort of like structure um how reality unfolds but i was not able to believe in my own ancestors they look so primitive old boring not attractive and weak because i i used to say when i was in the church i mean boni nyanga ulengise i ulengise inyongo yembuzi kadupani mo di mahlogo it's like this person akathathi kahle why don't you choose a better spirituality you know where you can just wake kick and bow was about be by belly sound fancy and preach and become you know the man of god so it was it was it was that bad but when i had to transition ilozilang shaya ke mama ilozilang shaya i went through the worst The only thing I had was my wife. My family would constantly misunderstand me. Car broke, couldn't stay at my house. I left my job, you know, as a manager. Um I started a business, it fell off, everything crashed. When it crashed, I was forced to look into one thing because one thing that was not satisfied was was my soul. Then I thought to myself, okay, I don't know what to do. And then I spoke to my mother because I was so angry. I remember, you know, the turning point in my life, I spoke to my mother. When I spoke to her she basically um said some things and I got so angry I screamed and I think I lost it something of vua game mm. then we were in I was in the in the toilet so bogo khoni sicha sinama sinama sponge omqamelo I broke the thing off it was flat the sponges were flying all over I was so mad 
And she was so scared. She said, do you want to kill me? Then my mind came back. I thought to myself, yo, this is my mother. I'm angry. So she said, what is going on with you? I've been telling you through Shwailos. Because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you know, I'm a bonchis. You would cook I'm a bonchis over time, you know, for hours. That's where I come from. Know, but it wouldn't lift off until such a point where she told me, you're going through this process because of Then at that time, nothing was working out. I gave up. I thought to myself, okay, let me just um, give it a chance. Let me ask what's going on. And then Wang Chaluting Tati Sniff in Tele ain't in and sleep on the floor. By the way, at that time I was partially disabled because when I'm sitting like this, my bag would snap and I wouldn't be able to stand straight. I was getting a series of blackouts, I was having lung problems, and you know, the medical practice, uh, the, the medical the, the medical professionals could not see anything. I was getting extreme headaches, you know, I was it was just a roller coaster. So I asked them and they came for the first time, they showed up. Because if they want me with your twas, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to So I just wouldn't buy it, you know. Where is it written? You know? So and then my ancestors came and told me two things. One is a secret. I'll reveal it when, when time is right. The other one, but he you will become a healer. Then I gave in. From then I started embracing my journey. But funny enough, at that time I had studied plant medicine I had tons of books studying, you know, um, plant microbiology, mm -hmm. studying studying biochemistry all by myself. Because it's called Balila. I would go to varsity and drop out. I don't know how many courses I took, you know, I dropped out. So after studying that, I was so knowledgeable. That's why I took myself through initiation because I knew how to invoke the four elements. When I went through my self-initiation, funny thing, I used English from the beginning to the end. Because secondary to that, my language was is is so I couldn't imagine biza mat losing it. Then inaban tabatala, laba bang frosta na yung kulo tin figi ning enzele izinto zenzege. No, I couldn't do that. So the only language I had was English. I remember kneeling down, calling upon. It was so funny. I didn't believe in my ancestors. I even mm. said, any spirit that's willing to work with me. That's how crazy I was. I was far off. But my ancestors knew it's time. They came and said, yes, we are here. My grandmother showed me, Uti, there are two colors that signify what you're going to do. The first one was red, the second one was green. So interpretation came that red was the fire because I'm an advocate for, for the voiceless. Mm. But an ethical one, I'm going to put it straight, but an ethical one, I don't apply the, the power that I have, mm. but I fight for the innocent. I fight, you know, I'm more like a witch hunter. If I'm targeted at destroying people, so I was gifted. I was mm. given it by specifically, and I was told I'm gonna do that work. So umli lo ihamba no bungo mabama gela ngapalati no bungo upgel. The other one, which was green, had a lot to do with you know prosperity. That's why I do money rituals. But ang izenzi tualo yenza ipagam because these are you know energies from the earth that we install in people's energies to radiate better, you know. Mm. And then ihamba futi um, with with. A few different other earth, earth, earth elementals. So So they aligned me from then. So then I started understanding them. And my ancestors came during my my procedure, you know, uh, my process year initiation. They came and blessed me. We've got a special way that which ancestors satisfy us because mm. it happened to my mother. It happened to me. The secret I can't really talk mm. about it. So they came and satisfied me from that day. Mm. I wasn't walking on my on my um, heels. Mm. I was walking on my toes. Mm. I was walking tall. Thinking, I've got a supernatural assistant because it just comes before. If you want to harm me, it always comes because my assistant is so overprotective of me. And I knew this is a beautiful thing because I'm thinking, I've got a supernatural assistant, you know? So life is better and easier because I'm not walking blindly. When I'm supposed to take a move, you know, I'm, you know um, direction is inspired. They give me directive. This is where you must go. Then I start executing. So I live by faith, not blind faith. Because I pray and want to initiate something, they inspire direction, and then I step over to it, and miraculously things start working out. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's a long shot of my journey. So um, since then, 
I've been ngilungisela abantwana the indigo children. Yes. You know, bengilungisela abantu bamakhosi because as they go for consultations they don't get real information. First of all, umuntu amakhosi mamhlolela it goes blank. If our course level in Yamakosi, no disrespect intended, but this is a hierarchical issue because Abamakosi, they have been lied to a lot of times. Some healers are honest because they don't align with that energy. They say, Mama, because yeah. when I mean, those are honest healers. So that's the first problem. Second problem, if Bafunu with Bakuli somewhere in Ubi and you're not on the same level or in the same clan, so loyal Muntuya Oshwa E Tongwe. Sorry, not the tongue in a pethwin, Uti, you are not aligned here. You must just go. Mm. So they struggle because they jump from pillar to post. I'm going to assist you, I'm going to assist you, but they can't because they don't align energetically. So again, indigo children have a very special gift. It's different. You know, it's not a gift. Because, you know, there's a special ability around that which aligns to, you know, um, 5D, five dimensional frequencies, which are not, um, you know, widely recognized within mm -hmm. Ubungom. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how it is. Manji, these are things that we need to understand. I mean, I was privileged enough before Mkala Lento Bnyang, I had to learn first. You know, uh, my children, Baba privileged because when you come for initiation Makosin, you already know from a young age and you start gravitating towards spiritual, you know, subjects. They've learned astrology, astronomy, they've learned you know, um, hematicism, all these um, universal spiritual disciplines. But when you go and want to intertwine that, they'll tell you as seven zilezint. But when they came to me for the first time, we'll align all the knowledge you have to itong alako. Because if you read these things, they can take you from creation, take you from, you know, the management of the universe, the cosmos. But when it comes to itonga, they can't link. So, Tina, we're able to link because Itonga is, is more like your lesser spirits. You know, there are higher spirits that created us, the, the creator gods. There are spirits that are serving the creator gods. You know, they're looking at certain aspects of the earth mm -hmm. regions and there are lesser, you know, spirits as we go down the hierarchy. And the ones who are executing the will of the universe will be your ancestors. So now that people mm -hmm. don't understand that, but mm -hmm. Um, it's it's something which does not necessarily align to the belief in God. But if you're going to ent entertain the idea of God, you must understand where God is and where your ancestors are and where you are. Mm. But it's a topic for another day because that's when people do not understand how to intertwine praying to God and ancestors. They feel like it's blasphemous to pray to God and ancestors. But if we actually knew who God is, because we took one book and want to believe in everything that is encapsulated in the book, so it limits us from exploring and understanding, you know, the true, uh, the truth to the cosmic creation itself. So we are bound to the book. You know, I listen to Christians. They keep saying, according to the Bible. And I'm thinking, if you snap out of the Bible, you might just find, you know, truth. You might just find, you know, better versions. Because the creation story, according to the Bible, it's by far the weakest and the one that's got too many faults that cannot be accounted for. But if you go into spiritual literature and go beyond the Bible, even books that came before, they have a better account of creation. Until you come across Sumerians, you know, the, um, uh, the Anunnaki, mm -hmm. then you'll get to understand the true creation and archaeology is proving that. But I would like to also um, subiela back to the indigo children. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yes, um, the indigo children are the children who um, most of them, are born after the year 2000. Remember the year 2000, we were told uh, we're gonna, the earth is going to collapse, you know, computers are going to shut down, people's memories, mm. whatever, that nonsense. Mm. So at that time, you know, spiritualists actually had predicted that we are, go we are coming into the age of Aquarius. So an eon was changing. So mm. the, the, the universe was bombarding certain cosmic rays which were increasing our consciousness. So children who were born in the age of Aquarius their consciousness is by far evolved. That's why you cannot subject the child who was born under the year 2000 to the creation of Jesus, you know, to Jesus. It was easy with us and, you know, our older counterparts that would force you because your consciousness is not as awoken mm. as the indigo children. So, but specifically, those who were born after, their consciousness is far more developed. That's why Yama 2000 can break your household in one day that you build over 30 years Ama 2000, they would, you know, lay to waste your intelligence and they would just frustrate you. 
I'm a 2000s, I'm more liberated, you know, sexually liberated. They are more uh, creative, you know, because the, the cosmic rays have actually bombarded the earth and have completely shifted, you know, the consciousness of these beautiful children. So nobody understands them. the home wrecker, you know, because their consciousness does not operate on, you know, um, weak, weak reasoning. You can't just go to them and say, hey, when I'm so shy, what, but mm. it doesn't work. You must reason with them, you know, you must be intelligent enough because that's how advanced they are, you know, um, mentally. So now these children who were born after that age, most of them have become indigo children. They've got supernatural abilities that are on a high level of evolution mm. within human psyche and human consciousness. So they've got creativity, which is, you know, just above what we used to know. They've got supernatural abilities. That's why they see clearer, you know, come and bring your Jesus. They will question your Jesus and break the whole idea of Jesus. Bring religion, restrictions, limitations. They don't succumb to that because their consciousness can see right through that. So specifically indigo children are those who are blessed with a more powerful spiritual gift from inception. You know, they have got clear audience. They can channel information through their, their audio. You know, they can hear information from divine realms. These are children who can see into, into divine um, realms, you know. They see through dreams. Um, they can even read people's minds. They're so amazing. But now here comes the problem. As an indigo child, you are in a school which endorses religion. Mm. Because religion has been approved by the system. Mm. So religion says, you know, Christianity is allowed to be practiced and African spirituality must not be practiced, you know. As far as I know. So when you collapse at school, nobody pays attention to you. Nobody understands how to calm you down. So these children find themselves as outcasts because they constantly experience blackouts at school. So when you go to school, you fall out. And your parents are Christian, by the way. So when you get back home, they take you to pastors. They keep praying for you over and over and over again. But you still like, you are still going to experience the same thing. So I've got so many people who say there's a video that I created because, you know, being Christian and becoming... Inyanga, you know, I just made a video and said, yes, I was a pastor, but now saying Inyang. And Christians came and ate me up. Like, bang it, and this guy, Ricky something, created a video. Yes. And I was insulted so much, mm -hmm. like, bang, bizang, charlatan. Mm. You know, they insulted me. Mm. And I went to the, I went to the, um, to that video and said, no, because I know the truth. I've seen mm. the truth. I was there. I was within the confines, you know. So mm. I understand whether I used to judge as well. When I was in church, we would, you know, start insulting the Zessis. When you go to church, you don't even have the word of God. What the hell are you doing? You know, walking barefooted, choosing a life that's so <laughs> crazy, you know. I was there. And I was judging them. And I even judged my own mother. I remember I went to, 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 to my home shrine. And because I had so much power, I shut it down. I said, in the name of Jesus, you shrine of the kingdom of darkness, I shut you down. Guess what happened? The shrine was shut down. Umama Zanga partly, she never went to the, to, the, to the shrine. But the shrine was opened by me. The very same person who shut it down, I went mm -hmm. through initiation. It's when I was saying, yeah, bo. Please leave me. So then I opened. So now these indigo children experience so much rejection from their parents because the parents would say, well, pastors are praying for them. You know, people said, yes, you know, Baba could make money. So because they prayed for me, this thing doesn't go away. You can pray all you want. An indigo child is a special child who vibrates on the fifth dimension. It's a child who can tap and dabble in multiple dimensions with no hustles. An indigo child is a child who's a blessing to humanity because they can assist us with their powerful gifts. An indigo child sleeps and goes through um, out-of-body experiences. An indigo child, you know, travels in different dimensions and sees things that are not in this dimension. An indigo child is highly lucid. They go into an alpha state. They just close their eyes and start channeling information from divine realms. They're so amazing. They're a blessing because these are the true elite healers. That's why they don't have to go through Ubungoma because Ubungoma was, was meant for people who are only starting in their spiritual journey in their life's evolution. Because Ubungoma is a detailed and lengthy process that's meant to prepare someone who does not have much spiritual um, power. Mm. You know, they teach them. That's why 
Emma Cosina Siguenzi Lob, as quasi fundi city was lacko, because you come highly evolved. We remind you, we align you, and we simply just assist you to go through the rite of passage. So Tina, as quasi fundi city was lacko, because you come with a highly evolved spiritual self. Hmm. But Ebongomen, that's why they teach you everything. They start you from scratch and you need time. It's because in your evolutionary journey, you've only started with healing. When you've lived and died and learned the lessons and wakula ebongomen, then you become a and a igel. You become um prophet who just goes mm -hmm. through the rite of passage. Then after that, you go to elite levels where you become wamakosi. And more wamakosi, your gift is so powerful that you even skip all these processes or the limitations is abangom. Then you start exercising, you know, your godly power because the power that is instilled on that level is so big that abantonabam they even get scared. When I tell them, some of them cannot even shake the feeling they're so powerful, you know, but as they go and master, because we are closer to becoming ascended masters, we join the guardian Sibama Tonga. We stop going through the cycle of birth and rebirth. So we become the guardians of our lineage, our clans. That's when we make decisions. That's when we become the parents spiritually, you know. So as an indigo child, you've went through the process in one of your lifetimes, you started to about Umgoma, but fundis, because this is important. Ubungoma is very important in our lives. That's why they say it's a universal calling. It's not, but I mean, according to me, this is an institutionalized process. That's why umunto umlungu can do ubungoma. A calling is universal. Mm. They say ubungoma be universal. I don't want to fight nabangoma because they're very brutal. And So, but... A calling is universal. Yes. I can initiate an Indian because I know how to unlock their supernatural abilities mm. and give them a practice, mm. or oh, that's Indian. You know, they already know their tradition and culture. But being able to see in spirit is something that I can do for different races. You could be white. I can open you up to see in spirit. You know, because I'm using principles, Angsu Umgoma, who has been given a process. Mm. Abangoma, they will debate on process because this is an institutionalized process it's a system so but tina we don't have a system you know we only have a safe community where we apply principles to unlock you spiritually you know that's why you can come from a different race you can come from a different spiritual calling we can be able to open that you are zulu i'm not changing you so you'll still be zulu you still practice your zulu gift you know your tradition but the mm -hmm. gift is universal it's one and the same thing so indigo children also have their own unique identity. That's why when they come, they become extremely modern. They come as mediums. A medium does not have to follow tradition. That's why they wear these nice um, crystals. They work with different methodologies. So Tina, as royal healers, we are not traditional healers. It must be clear because traditional healers have been insulting us for much too long. But because they don't understand who we are, I, we just give them that. Tina, we are peaceful because in principle, we are we, we have to be sophisticated. So of course, we can't just throw ourselves yes. and debate. This is Lashle Panzi and do yes. all these funny things, you know? So, so Tina, we, we are from that. And we are not traditional healers because we do not use traditional systems. But rather, we're inspired by ancient wisdom. That's why we can do online consultations. We've got a highly evolved spirit which can tap to someone who's in the United States, tap to someone who's in Rwanda. We do that. But traditional healers cannot because they have been taught traditional systems. Somebody must sit here. It's a system. That's why I'm saying it's a detailed institutionalized system. Mm. Because, Tina, we naturally see it's organic. We are able to tap into different spaces, different mm. people, different ge ge geographic locations, mm -hmm. you know? So as we tap into these into these into these areas we are able to still do the work and somebody would feel they need to come and say yeah online it's a scam yo i wish i can pull out my whatsapp and show you even my children don't you know they always get mm. excited in how accurate this thing is mm. it's so accurate to a point where somebody who's overseas and feel like you know what i wish i could come on caesar because you have identified things that i've been looking for all my life it's simply because we are not we are not traditional. We are spiritual. We use tarot cards. Some of my children use tarot cards. Some mm -hmm. of them use um, pendulums. Some of them use crystal balls. I am spiritually gifted. I can tap into these things and teach them. Mm -hmm. You know, they are free. There's no limitation. They are free to follow their spirits, you know. 
So that's how it goes. So an indigo child is always suppressed. And as they come, it's also very unclear as to what are you doing? If we're young, why aren't you wearing this? Why aren't you doing that? So they come as mediums, you know, they come as prophets, they come as bishops, mm. they come as wizards, you know, because they, they can even practice Wicca. Wicca is just in a tradition, you know, mm. a spiritual practice. Because they've got power to execute rituals, they can do that. They can practice Uvungoma if they want. They can practice, you know, Obu um, Prophet, whatever they want to do. They've got the freedom because they come from royalty. They possess both, you know, gifts that are that are in contrast. Eo Kulega and the one that uses Muti in our African traditional context. So, indigo <laughs> children. So, you know, it's so interesting when you talk about these indigo children because... This podcast, it would appeal to older people. Okay. It's supposed to. Mm -hmm. But my statistics show mm -hmm. that. Oh, lovely. Lovely. It's incredible. So you're giving this feedback. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these kids are just more evolved than yes. their elders. Counterparts. Mm -hmm. Because really they're holding up this. It's. I'm always like, what are the 17-year-olds doing here? What? Mm -hmm. The 20-year-olds, what are they doing here? Like, so, okay, cool. So what I want to know is, is everybody born after 2000 indigo child or it's just the gifted ones that are called the indigo child? Well, um, I would actually say if you, if you look, look up the definition of indigo children, it's specifically the ones who've got those prominent gifts. Yeah. Um, however, I would still like to classify these young children as indigo children because their consciousness is far more evolved than their counterparts. So remember what happened in the year, two, year 2000? So human consciousness was evolving. We got into a new eon, the age of Aquarius. Yeah. So it declares them to be on that indigo line because their mm. aura becomes an indigo aura, one that's strong, one that's powerful. That's why these children can do things that we failed to do for for some time. You know, they can just go through things, you know, they do amazing things. Yeah. And we have called them devils because they're of a different breed. Yeah. They're extremely amazing in almost everything they do. Look at our children today. You wouldn't see a difference between an American child and an South African child because their creativity, their dress code, you know, their ideas, their thinking, it's out of this world, you know. So these cosmic rays, they came and bombarded the earth and actually had influenced their consciousness so much that it gave them an edge you know, towards um, the human evolutionary cycle. So we're yet to learn a whole lot of things from them. As they grow, um, they experience life differently. You know, that's why they grow so quick, get it so quick and kill yeah. themselves and die quick. Like everything is so fast. You know, if they want to become criminals, they do it far better than their older counterparts. If they want to become, you know, slaves, slay queens, they just triple it. You know, Kanye uh, took years to perfect this, but they just go in Kanye and get 2. it. Kanye 2.0. <laughs> you know, it's 2.0. In fact, it's your 3.0. Like they, they're rushing too quick. So they catch it quick. So this whole thing about religion, they just don't want it because religion to them is backward. They have seen all the reasons to reject it. But even today, we're still dabbling, you know, trying to understand, can we do without, can we do with religion? But it's easy for them to see right through religion's flaws. And they say, but this is not, you know, what life is all about. So they just run through it and do much better, you know? Mm -hmm. So please, um, listeners must just understand that indigo children are special. If you, you are a parent who's got an indigo child, um, you've got problems in school, there's people like myself who are gifted with, you know, ESP to assist them. Some of them can still cope in school. Um, one of my, my assistant, one of my initiates, the first born, yeah, she was asking me, she says, so much about and you have experienced it so much. Mm. So what is something that had changed in your in your archives? Then I said, one thing I've learned is that as an indigo child, you may be forced to drop out of school and you may not be forced to drop out of school depending on the severity of is people in your lineage. Say for instance, if the grandmother does not fulfill the spiritual gift which is in the family and her children and her children, children's children are the ones who are going to feel the pinch. That's why even from a school age, because remember, they're indigo. So everything is just amplified. It's got a multiplier effect. Mm. So once it goes to the third generation and nothing was done, you know, the younger ones are going to get so much um, oppression. Even in school, um, I've, I've got one indigo child who just came in um, last week. You know, she collapsed almost every day at school. And I said, Mpatelin Lomdwana, but you, Baba, we need your intervention. When I when I um, analyzed her story, we had to put her a, a, a petrain, 
she had to stay and a sabuele move. So, but because we know that school is important in this day and age, we release her to go to school. What ulega schooling? She came back some pathel. What ulega footi bambuisa a half conscious. Then we knew it's time, and she says, you know what? I feel in my spirit I shouldn't go back to school. You know, and then I thought, okay, you know, this is not an ideal case. But let's take you through the core training. Once you have grasped everything, you'll go back to school. She says it's better that way. And she's highly gifted, beautiful gift. You can see because her family, we've only started fixing in Dabaye Tong. Mm. So the severity is pushing, is pressing the young ones. You know, they just throw themselves into drugs. You know, yeah. they don't focus at school. Like so many bad things are happening to them, a trail of bad things. And it's not because ancestors are bestowing, you know, curses and bad luck. No. I always tell people that alignment is important. If you are misaligned, imagine if you're a car or a train that's meant to to drive on the on the rail and you go off track. Are you going to get far? Mm-mm. Definitely not, because this is not your your intended path, you know, terrain. So you're going to be slow mm. and you will experience problems because you are not created to do that. Mm. So as a family, when we drift far off from our spiritual guidance, mm. when we drift off from our native ways of living and you know how we connect to the divine. We find ourselves struggling. You know, there's a pattern of divorces. There's a pattern of, you know, not coping in school. There's a pattern of different types of um, pandemics that are prevalent in most family members, you know. And, you know, she was saying, so Baba, would you consider that a curse? I, I'm saying, no, it's not a curse. This thing is misalignment, which is aggravated. So the moment you go off track and you are going deep into an unfamiliar terrain which was not created for you, there's no grace, there's no provision. So you will you will hit different things. I always say mm. ancestors are not here to punish us and beat us down because everyone thinks they will punish you, they will strangle you. Take. I mean, when I started, mm. I said because it's a language that we understand. Mm. But I've, I've uncovered that if you go off track, it's your doing, it's your choices and you went far off track and you have driven far off your alignment. So imagine if you are a parent and you've got a child who's got everything, protection, food, love, support, and care, and your child decides, I want to live in the streets. What's going to happen to them? They will encounter all sorts of problems. So Ilozi will never, Ilozi wants you to prosper. Ilozi loves you so much. They are here to ensure that you align. That's why they come into your dreams. Repeat one and the same message over and over and over again because they want to align you. So when you go off track, then you experience a whole lot of problems and issues. And when that happens, you would say, We use that language, but it's incorrect because sometimes they can block you from progressing because if you proceed and progress and prosper, you will not be able to move back to the line. So they can block, but they're not, they're not punishing you. Mm. They're not depressing you. I mean, it, depression doesn't come from illos. If you are off track... Everything you do never works out. No provision, no assistance, no help. You feel isolated. You will definitely run into depression. It's because you have drifted far off and the energies in you are not in sync. They start getting stuck. You know, they just, you know, distribute it in a way that's not in alignment with your, with your, 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 your framework, you know, your, your spiritual and your physical framework. So as a result, you go into depression. If you can look at what depression is, you'll see that axioma symptoms was two when or my pap one. Go and look up what are the symptoms. Yes, go and look up what are the symptoms of ilosi. They will tell you all these things, but these things are not a symptom ilosi. It's depression. It's anxiety. Now traditional healers start exploiting you when you are depressed. You mm. want help. They say also to us. They misdiagnose you. Mm. They take you through wrong initiation. Sorry, <laughs> 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 So I know that kind of spiritual gift is painful because it looks like they do have a gift. So when on the other end, you've been composed. So, so, so you don't even show signs, you know? Yes. 
And I'm telling them it's boring because you know Mutoni zinto, You know, it just validates and solidifies what yeah. they have. But because I'm 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 an adept, I'm knowledgeable in these things, I was able to navigate Ninga and that's crazy. Because people like that, Ben Zanjal. So there's a specific case I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about. There's a gentleman out there hanging music. Mm. So this gentleman um, was an actor in one of the famous mm. um, soapies. Mm. He was, you know, beginning he went to a traditional healer. Mm. Traditional healer wam Caesar wa polinyao. Mm. Then after that, you know, wa twasi and he saw that it didn't work. He started insulting Ubnyang. Mm. Now I will, I will, I will actually break this down. Mm. The first possible case would be that yes, he was sick. Yes, begashushwa ilos. I could assume that because that's what led him to that. And Magafiga, our police, where he can admit to the fact that he was healed, even though Utuga Angelento every day, he doesn't mm. even have a message. He preaches about it, Lozi. And as you think, can he give you a message of Utukulu Ming or Satani all the time? You know, but Tina, Mina, Mina Apostola was given a message. Nga Pupa over and over, and he will message you to go and tell the world this. I didn't believe in it. But as I grow near born, my life personifies that. You know, an apostle, when you are sent, you have a message. But his message is just to. You know, we in the therapy, he was scammed. Or Mlamu Shu Mezoi process, and he just wants to vent out, and he's now have a ministry around that. But that's okay with him, you know, so understand. So, possible cases, he went, he was healed. After he was healed, maybe they must have taken advantage, or he was misdiagnosed. If une, Because when I see him preach, I believe mm-hmm. he he's an apostle, probably. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, it's about wrong, an apostle, mm-hmm. someone who was sent, someone who's got this thing, mm-hmm. who's got a powerful word, who can preach, who can pray. Mm-hmm. I have that. So he was supposed to be aligned in his tune. So maybe he was misdiagnosed. Or I would like to believe nobody quasi and Zalento was in the mid. Even when there's nothing. Mm. So when he was doing that, some people are honest with themselves. He probably thought, no, this is fake. This is false. It's a scam. I don't have this. I don't mm. even see it working. And young, I'm seven zel. But one thing I don't like is he went through the process. that He was hired on a show. He was talking about in Tuasoyak. And I'm thinking, this show is not about you, normal in Tuasoyak. Mm. Now he failed. He come back and dismisses what he was talking about. Mm. Like he's bashing it so hard. And I'm thinking, you know what? We are better off taking things easy. Singer, I'm okay. Listen to any cool, but um, I'm not. I'm not on about that. Mm. So the second possible case is that he went there. He had depression because he had lost his gigs, and they just blatantly took advantage. And he was honest to himself and felt that this is a scam. Then he went out and started bashing. But me namang impeg. He's an apostle. He's mm-hmm. someone who is who mm-hmm. has a heart, who has to speak to the people, who has to pray. But unfortunately, he was misdiagnosed. He's going to hate this forever. But I think in church, he's much better. Because which is for praying, mm. which is for you know, which is something beautiful mm. as well. But unfortunately, he got, you know, I'm a crook, I'm a scams. Mm. So, but, you know, I made a promise to myself that I'm not going to be part of the problems. Mm. I was called, I mean, I was very comfortable. I was in business and I was doing fine. Mm. So my life was stopped because I needed to go to the right path. Mm. So when I accepted, I thought to myself, I'm not going to be part of the problem. That's why I'm a toilisi. That's why I'm in magic wallets mm. because I don't want to sell things. I know about these things. I know some of them are legit. But because I'm in a lab. So, but I'm more concerned about healing a person's soul, taking them through enlightenment. You know, indigo children are the most oppressed because you're a minor, you don't have money, you can't go seek assistance by yourself. You need your parents, um, you need your parents' support. And at the same time, they keep saying, you have horrible dreams as a child. You know, you suffer from insomnia. Mm. You suffer from, you know, schizophrenia because you hear voices. You know, you see things that don't exist in this physical reality. It's like you are psychotic, you know, mm. because you channel things. You don't, you, you can't even differentiate between the actual reality and your spiritual reality because voices. So it's frustrating yeah. for a child to, that's why they lock themselves up. You know, you can't talk to your parents. And umu pupa uboni so utu anti ngim pupa engena ngomuti and anti would say lomta na kuya sanya you know sega pamba eno sanga ene they will invalidate you because you're such a, a a powerful force you see things that are not supposed to happen as an indigo child 
family they must silence you because you will give them a problem you become the prime target how do i how do i mess with your parents if you are there how do i mess up the family because you'll keep seeing me i was an indigo child you know about tati was a family and i kept dreaming about them but at least being as with tati mom popular i'm jail i saw a whole lot of things they did oh really yes well popping on tati don't open your mouth and talk about it because once they find out you know about them they will definitely silence you or put you to you know the bench more pooping on tagati never tell them because um tagati will come to you hey how are you doing um you know they 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 have a closer relationship i mean i was sharing the other day with my children and i was saying um tagati une inkolo they will check what are you doing on a daily basis they will see lo muntu buya manzini lo muntu beka enyangeni beka enzani but what they don't know for sure is really did you go there how far is their dark magic working on you you know so they must just check your umtagatwako keeps a close relationship they want to see your status they want to ask oh how's your mother doing is she okay has she been to work you know you know is she doing right are you sure so they keep asking because they need to they need to verify if the you know the dark spells have actually taken over and have done whatever they were supposed to do and they keep checking because they want to see it's like that so manga be khona umthakathi family as an indigo mm. child you are the first target and how do they target you simple as a child you love sweets you love this you love that so they will come in your dreams and feed you your best treat you start eating it's nice because you love it right you've got a crush on this boy in, at school so this boy comes in your dreams he looks like the man of your dreams he starts sleeping with you if it happens over and over and over again trust me your indigo status will be shut down you will forget your dreams you'll only see eating dreams and sexual dreams you will never be psychically open you know you'll never see things like we are valeg even with everyone when somebody creates a black magic spell mhlambe idliso or whatever it is it comes into your dreams you feed for the first time second time third time if it happens consistently trust me there's no other dream that you can see you yourself become tired you wake up tired you the zest for life the zeal for life actually depletes you know you you stop being hopeful about things you know experience more problems mm-hmm. things start crashing because when people come to me and i see they've been having such dreams it's because somebody had created a thought form when you speak ill in spirit you can create what we call a thought form if you create a magic portion it creates a thought form it's like you know some ai spiritual uh, minion that you create and this minion is going to go out there and try and you know um infiltrate your your system you know compromise your security go through portals and start messing up with you it does that so that's how witchcraft actually works for some people out there who are under attack how do you know you're under attack by dark magic spells one you must be careful because you would see um sexual dreams you already know you try to resist them but they will catch you with one thing your favorite partner somebody whom you open to sexually this person will come they start by testing if us tandela madota nje they bring a good looking man a hunk you'll open up then you have a sexual encounter it draws your energy it starts you know installing all these all the um the negative code that's going to make your system malfunction the viruses you know it installs viruses um in computer language so they test you in different things for example there's another test which i was i was conscientizing my children with let's say for example um you come to me and say baba i've been having sexual dreams i want you to assist me i can assist you and finish everything they will come you will see a dream again of you getting um sexual interaction at that time trust me it didn't happen it's just a test to exploit your system once you start believing oh my god it's happening you have dropped your security Mm. you know what i mean so sometimes when witches come they create a scene a scenario where they defeat you so once you give in to that that's when they can actually gain access <laughs> you know so it works like that in the spiritual realm because i was able to defeat my demons they were attacking me left right and center but one day now that i've learned all these amazing arts mm. because um my my spiritual art is so profound that i'm not umuntu osebenza ngendlela yabangoma noma africans only mm. I can cast spells using different, you know, spiritual disciplines, you know. So one day I just woke up and combined a powerful spell and I had to hit my enemies. Mm. That was the first time and the last time. Mm. Now I can breathe. Mm. And we also have we also have rituals 
that we, we perform to protect ourselves. I mean, if I have to defend myself... You were giving us the signs. You've yes. off-ramped a little bit. Oh, sorry, <laughs> yes. Because mm-hmm. we need to know the signs. Are. Lovely. Uh, you said the sexual... Mm-hmm. Dun dun, and then? Yes, it's the sexual dreams. We'll call it to catch you. Not call a problem, not a problem. I think these is, this is very important as well. So it's your sexual dreams. Yes. And after that, it's your um, eating dreams. Mm-hmm. When you're eating your dreams... And again, so you should not eat in your you dreams. You shouldn't eat in ever. your dreams. The only time you eat is when elders from your family come with anything that's in liquid format. But if it's solid food, get away from it. If it's red liquid, get away from it. Because a liquid actually can come to to empower you, to rejuvenate and empower you, you okay. know, and uh, yeah, to rejuvenate your spirit. But it's very seldom. So you shouldn't agree to eating. But your ancestors don't need permission. They'll come and give you right away. But when you are tempted, they use food that you love. You know, they will tempt you to agree to eating. But your ancestors, you know, even Nomdao can have sex with you. But it's not sex that has pleasure. You will not even hit a calm. Like you won't um, get to that yes, level. Yes. It just happened haphazardly. It's done quickly. You don't know where it started. You yes. don't see the figure. You just know that it happened. Yes. Umdawako. So it's not meant to be pleasurous, but it's it's meant to you know, instill energies and empower you spiritually. That's interesting. But the one that comes with an image that you can identify on the face and it's got pleasure and it goes for some time, definitely that is from dark energies. But your ancestors, it comes and happens quick. It doesn't have pleasure. It doesn't have a face. It doesn't even require consent. It just happens quickly. And you realize only when when you're finished, you know? Yeah, like... So again, how um, the signs... You, you will dream of yourself um, getting shot or getting chased by dogs or getting stabbed. And again, you will be overpowered. That's the most crucial one. When you're overpowered, sometimes it's just an attempt. And if you're overpowered and wake up feeling weak and thinking, oh my God, I got shot. I died in my dream. This is bad. I must do something about it. Then you start, you wake up, you start you casting, mm. you know, you give it so much attention. You get all whacked up. You know, you want to pray. You want to do a whole lot of stuff. That's when you have completely lost it. Mm-hmm. I tell my children, please relax. You know, you know you're strong. You know you, mm-hmm. you've got power. Just go into your sacred space. Confess against it. Don't mm-hmm. panic. Don't shout. Don't do declarations that are crazy. And come back to an understanding that you are strong. And this is only an attempt. And when you do that, you weaken the mm-hmm. the attackers and the attack itself. So and then we are kurulegalap. Again, the other one is um, it's misleading dreams when you see misleading dreams, because this is one of the most famous ones. You can get a dream that shows you that your mother is fighting against you, your mother is a problem, and you Mm -hmm. start, you know, um, deviating from your mother's love and connection, and that's when you become weaker and weaker and they can attack you. So these attacks, they come from thought forms. As a spiritualist, I'm going to create a ritual, then I give it an intention, I use muti to supercharge it, I will send it over then that thing becomes a minion which is created spiritually. Then it's going to go and pursue whatever that I did. It can try multiple attempts. Mm. It comes in attempts. You know, if it's feeding, I'm going to tempt you with food. You almost eat and you don't eat. I come back again, tempt you with another, you know, a mm. dish that you love until you get used to seeing this and, you know, the desire to eat comes and you start eating. When you eat proper food at its intense level, that's where you start eating red meat. Now you must know you are initiated into becoming a vampire someone who can be taken spiritually to eat, you know, flesh of other people. And when you start eating bad stuff like, you know, uh, poop, even if it's for a cow, you start smoking bad. Because when you get to that level, you must know you're completely defeated. You don't have any form of control and you're so weak that it's easy for them to come with anything and feed you directly. They don't even have to create a beautiful scenario for you to be, um, to, 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 to fall victim to that, you know, to be tempted. But they just give you something that's definitely going to mess you up. You see it, you understand it's messing you up, but your security measures have completely collapsed. So And at that level, you can't have a partner if you're having a continuous sexual dreams because this thing becomes your partner. It connects with you spiritually. Let me, let me even um, tell you this fun fact. Mm. Having sex with spirits is far more pleasureful than having with it with an actual human. Yes. People who've experienced it, they don't want to have a human partner. Because, I mean, a spirit knows how to connect directly to your spirit. That's where emotions lie. It knows how to press the buttons within two... Are you, do you mean when people are fast asleep or you mean what? When people are in deep sleep. 
Okay. Yes. yes. And yes. these spirits come and have sex with them. So if you don't know, you know, it ends up, you know, uh, meeting the needs for, it, it meets your sexual needs. And again, where's this coming from? These attacks will identify your unmet needs. If you don't have a partner who's sexually a- active with you mm. and you've got a huge sexual need, mm. guess what? Spirits will identify that and come and serve mm. you on a silver platter. They give you beautiful <laughs> sex. You know, that makes you hit climax within the first 10 seconds. Mm. It's by far most pleasurable. Mm. And, you know, your partner takes time. He's not interested. He's not good at it. And the spirit comes. They are succubi and incubi. So these are different genders for spirits that have sex with you. Mm-hmm. Comes and sleeps with you. It gives you pleasure. Then you start enjoying it, you know. And at that time, you will be using more toys and things like that because it's something that builds up. And the next moment, you don't want to go out. You become antisocial. You know, you struggle to conceive. You you are bad in relationships. You don't even have interest in mm. building relationships. Social life dies out. You know, a whole lot of things collapse right in front of your eyes because you have made a pact, you know, with a spiritual being that is taking over that part of your life and mm. it drains so much of your energy. After masturbating, you feel extremely weak and you is don't want to addiction? do anything. Uh, no. Yes, no. it's sex addiction, but spiritually. So you will okay. not do it with humans. Like you will not engage oh, with snap. humans. You will engage with toys because that partner can come and leverage off of your 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 cum. You know, it takes that energy. It feeds from that because it also does that when you're asleep at night. So it just comes and, you know, takes advantage. Now my partners, is and you feel like, oh no, I need to go to the toilet and do the thing. It takes your energy after that you are exhausted. Look at how you how you feel after um, a climax. Yes. It's blissful. Yes. You don't feel tired, but you feel relaxed. Yes. But when you come through masturbation, you feel extremely drained. Is then masturbation bad? I, this conversation keeps <laughs> coming up. Is there something? And we've only got two minutes left, so please, can you like... <laughs> so, you know, Mina, I've, I've learned to be to be level on the ground, to be grounded and to be extremely practical. Yeah. So I'm not a spiritualist who goes and says, hey, when I was satan, I don't talk mm. of these things. They must, they must be in touch with reality. Mm. So if, if we are going to look at it from a perspective of, you know, human sociology, then we would say masturbation is the safest way to satisfy yourself. Yes. You know, you can avoid getting diseases, you know, yes. getting heartbroken. So from that perspective is good. But if in any case there's a spirit which is, you know, joining you in that scene, it becomes extremely bad. But how are you going to know? What if I just want to get myself <laughs> off? I'm not inviting spirits. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get what you're saying. <laughs> you know? So now this is going to be a tricky one, but I would say if you've got sexual dreams, avoid masturbation. That's the quickest way to determine if you've got a, a spiritual partner who's, who's, who's harvesting your cum. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's messy. Messy. Yes. Who's, who's actually harvesting your, your People your do climax. that. Yes, people do it all the time. And listen to this. If you do it and you feel extremely drained, you must know you're not alone. There's an uninvited guest who accompanies you, who reminds you. Actually, the partner would say, it's time. How do we, I, no, but how do we, <laughs> then how do we uh, play and be nice to ourselves without inviting? Is there like a ritual you can do before to be like, Definitely. I just want to be by myself for this Definitely. round? <laughs> Definitely you can. If you want to self-satisfy, I call, I call it self-service, you know. <laughs> it's not bad to actually have self-service. So what you can do uh, is you can you can practice um, spiritual cleansing, you know. Get into a habit of burning in pepo, yako, incenses, yes. cleanse your aura. Okay. Even when you do these things, it's like you will you will cut ties and protect yourself from any uninvited energy. And after that, you know, they must be sensual, you know, take time to yourself, bend the, bend the, 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 the incense, you know, yes. and confess positive, create that beautiful space, but do not sensualize it too much at a time when you are doing the ritual, because when you do a ritual and sensualize it too much, you know, you're inviting yes. your partner. So let it be pure, let it be clean, yes. you know, just cleanse you. Let it be, you know, a staff meeting with yourself when you are cleaning up everything. And you can go ahead and do the deed, you know. Like I said, in our social um, <laughs> in our social lens, it's okay. Because your heart could be broken when you try to get satisfaction. But, you know, go ahead and get satisfaction. Cleanse your space. Practice spiritual cleanliness and you'll be fine. 
Thank you so much, Bab <laughs> Mashlangu. We will be better at playing with ourselves. Thank yes. you very much. We are better people today. Moya Rice, Moya Alright, Moya Ulight. It gets wild here. And I'm so happy that you joined the session. Um, please do like, share, and subscribe. Kamalam, Gumam Mia. And it's always, always a pleasure to bring you these great guests. See you next time. Hi, this is Nziki Maswai, the producer of Moya. Thank you so much for all your love and support. The bank details are now on screen. Please do your bit so that we can build this university, so we can give the African child the education that they're not getting at the Mlungu schools. Thank you so much, guys. Who are you when all you were has been diluted by lies and white lines cancelling out all that which has been written of your history? Why do you look at yourself as a mystery? Doesn't the sun shine because you open your eyes? Doesn't the moon stay situated within the same stars your DNA sparkles off? Your spirit knows that surely corn into it off. Buza umoya so you may return to being well off. Because spiritually you are rich, yet your ancestors cry because you are out of reach. But yours is to command all elements while God takes inspiration from the very mirror she looked at to become. Remember who you are and never finish just when they think that with you they are done.